Here we have our Raspberry Pi storage that we created in an earlier video that's using this USB drive to serve both the host and NFS. We've now set it up to run TFTP for booting, which is how this particular Pi here has been booted. And as you can see, it's running power over ethernet. Today we'll be setting up this Raspberry Pi here placing on this uh, power over ethernet hat and this display, mounting it to yet another sled and putting it in this cage and running it off power over ethernet. This is all achieved simply by plugging on the board, screwing it to this sled Plug on our display, sliding out its carrier, and plugging in its Ethernet. And now it powers up. That will be TFT booting off this particular Pi and running Raspbian. So to see how all of this done is done, let's get started. To start, I will install DNS Mask for the TFTP server. Once this is installed, we will download a copy of Raspbian for use by our FTP clients. Unzipping this to the local directory as we need to copy the files from the image to the source directories. Next, create two directories, one for boot and one for the root partition. Using low setup, we will mount the image into a loop file system and then mount each of the partitions in the loop device. Now it's time to create the destination path. I am placing this under a single directory called NFS. The copy is done using the archive switch to preserve permissions, symlinks and device IDs. Make sure to place the boot into its own location. Look at the DNS mask configuration. Even though this is not going to serve out any IP addresses, we will set the DHCP range, making sure to use the proxy mode so that it will send any requests to any other DHCP server on the network. Next is to enable the TFTP server and the directory root to be used. I make use of a DHCP script to trigger background tasks whenever a TFTP or an ARP packet is received. This is done with the scripts directory and lastly we set a unique root. This ensures that each client is pushed to its own directory based on its MAC address under the TFTP root location. Upon restart of the DNS mask service, I can see that I have a problem, so let's check the configuration file. There it is, a typo. Fixing that enables the service to now start correctly. Let's run through the script that gets called. We start by finding the IP address of the server that is, the script is running on, 
so that we can use it in the FS tabs for the NF server, NFS server mounts. This section sets up all the directories required. Base mount is for scripts that the RC local will use. The lower directories are for sources. The upper and is for the deltas for the overlays and the work directory is what is actually mounted. Next, whenever the script is called due to an ARP add, we create all those directories using the client's MAC addresses for the path. We also make functional boot scripts so that the Raspberry Pi 3s can start to connect. I also add a path into the local NFS server. We then create directories for the main file system that the clients will use and export it as well. There is also a special case for the Pi 3s where it needs to find a start 4 elf file early in its boot so we make sure that that exists in the TFTP root directory. After making sure all the mounts are there, I create a custom FS tab file for the clients so that they can mount their file systems correctly. And lastly, we reload the mounts by reloading the NFS server. It's now time to change the boot order on your P4 clients using Raspbian. To do this, we will use Raspbian config from a base install. Once the boot happens, you will see that the boot line will change and it will attempt to connect to DHCP. Now we have to set up the DHCP server and the final change to our boot source on the TFTP server. For the boot source, we just need to copy the boot directly we just used into the location NFS P1 boot on our boot server. If this is not done, then the first NFS boot, the bootloader will be reverted back on the client to its default of being the USB followed by SD card. I'm using a UDM for my DHCP server and so need to set this setting to enable TFTP. Your router will be different but should still have this capability. If you liked the video, please press the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.